Hey, I'm Kimani, and behind me in these boxes are everything I need to take my journeyman from this to this. Yes, I have a pre-release version of the Onefinity Maso Elite upgrade kit. So I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step process showing you all the pieces and all the steps you need to take to upgrade your Onefinity journeyman. So go get yourself a box cutter and some uh, metric hex keys and let's get to work. I'm gonna start by unpacking all the boxes just to make sure everything that I need for the upgrade is here. Um, I'll do a close up view so you can kind of see, but right now we have the new motors the power controller, drag chains, all of the homing switches, the Maso controller itself, and the upgraded Z20. It was too long to fit in the other one, but this tube contains the X and Y raceway. So now that we have all of our equipment unboxed, it's time to start working on the current machine setup. And what we'll need to do is start taking apart uh, certain pieces, starting with the wiring. So we're gonna remove the wiring from the outside of the machine and anything connected to the current controller and put that all to the side. Um, if you may have noticed, I also have a spindle set up, so I'm going to need to remove my current spindle and uh, spindle mount so that I can install the Z20. So, like I said, we're just going to go to each side of the machine and disconnect the cables from the left and right. We'll remove everything from the X axis. and unplug everything from the back of the controller box. Next, I'm gonna start taking apart the spindle. Um, if you have the standard Makita router, this would be the time to uninstall that. So I'm going to loosen it up so I can take the spindle out and then I'm going to disconnect all of the cables and then remove the four screws that hold the Z slider to the X gantry. Now I'm going to move the X rail to the front and using a five millimeter hex wrench I'm going to remove the four bolts on the left and the right side so that I can remove the X rail from the Y gantry and set it to the side. We won't need that again until later on, so I'm going to remove it from the table and start to unscrew the left and right rails from my work surface. Now that they're both unscrewed, I'm going to gently flip them upside down on both sides because uh, the next steps we take will require us to access the screws at the bottom. So here I'm bringing over all the parts and I'm just gonna sort out based on the rails they're associated with. So you'll have bags for your B, your Y, and your X. Starting with the B1 rail, which would be the right rail, on the opposite end of the motor, we're going to loosen this screw, which will allow us to pull out the coupler holding the B1 wire in place. Next, we're going to flip the machine over to the motor side, and using the 4 millimeter hex wrench, we are going to remove the four bolts holding the motor in place. Okay. 
Once the bolts are removed and set aside, we're going to pull off the motor and pull the cable through the rest of the tube. If you look inside, you can see a piece of the motor coupler still attached to the screw. So what we're going to do is rotate the screw around. And what that does is it puts into place two set screws attached to that coupler and line them up with that hole. If for some reason your machine doesn't have that hole, uh, contact Onefinity support. But uh, if you move it around and I'd like to use a light but uh, to see inside but you'll see the two set screws and using a 2.5 millimeter hex key you should be able to loosen both of those screws so you'll loosen the one and do a slight turn and you'll see the other and you'll loosen that one once both set screws are loose, you'll take a pair of pliers to pull out the remaining piece of the coupler. So here is a close-up shot of the coupler once it's out and the two set screws. You'll have to repeat this process for each motor. So just wanted you to see what it looks like. Now that all that's removed, we are ready to install the new motor. So grab the B motor and inside you will find the new coupler and the B axis motor. So uh, there is a right way and a wrong way to put these on. So if you look, there's this very flush flat side. And then on this side, you see if the hole is a little bit bigger and you can see the ring in the back. So this is the side that goes to your machine. This is the side that sits against your motor. So. Uh, if you don't, when you try to put it on, it'll fit either way, but when you try to put it on, you'll notice that you can't get it in. So, just as a note, this side into the machine, this side flush against the motor. So now we're going to attach the coupler to the motor, and we're going to get our wrench and make sure to tighten down both screws. Um, if you don't do this, it can cause slippage once the motor is activated. Now we're going to just go ahead and attach it to the B rail. And we're going to do the same process we did before, but this time we're rotating the screw so we can line up the coupler screws with the holes on the side. And we're just going to make sure to tighten down both of those because... Like I said before, if we don't, uh, you can have slippage issues when the machine is activated. Once you've tightened both of those coupler screws, we're just going to reinsert the four bolts we used from the previous motor and tighten all of those down. Yeah, so now that the motor is attached, we're going to feed the wire back through. So this has a large plastic coupler. Um, if you kind of get your fingers in towards the bottom, you can snap it apart and just put that to the side. Then we're going to flip the rail over and slide it back down the other way. I'm just going to feed that in. Okay, so now that we've flipped the rail around, we will take the B1 coupler and attach it back to here. As you should be able to see, the hole is on the top, which will line up with the hole on the bottom. So we snap that in and we slide that into place. And so you make sure you push it in there really good. It should actually recess. And what I just discovered is that if you have it pretty lined up, if you take the 2.5 millimeter, you can actually fit it in the hole and it'll help you 
line up your, just in case if it didn't go in absolutely perfect, you can use it to just nudge it just a little bit to make sure your holes line up and into place with the uh, screws that were in there earlier. Once everything is tightened down, we're going to flip everything back over and start working on the gantry block. Okay, so, now on the outside, we're going to mount the B axis homing trigger. And so, you're going to mount it just like this. So, tab out. And there is a hole already ready. There you go. Then we're going to grab the B axis homing switch and mount it over here. So, once again, taking the screw provided, you're going to mount it so that the cable flows along the outside of the machine away from the cutting area. Drop it in like that. And attach again with the three millimeter. And you are now set up on your B1 rail. So now starting with the Y1 rail, um, I've already flipped mine over, uh, but if you happen to have the monitor mount, you're gonna wanna remove the monitor mount first uh, and then flip it over. And then we're just gonna do the exact same thing we did on the B1 rail, uh, starting with removing this front screw and then uh, taking this out. Using our 3 millimeter, loosen that screw. And then taking our needle nose, just grab in there, pop that out. And then we're just gonna separate that pretty easy. And then we're gonna flip it around so we can pull this out the other end. Now that we've put the rail, we're just going to pull the cable out the same way we did the first time. And then we're going to remove the motor, four millimeter key, and a wrench. Remove all four bolts. Now that all four bolts are removed, we will remove the motor, motor in. And similar to like we did before, we're gonna turn the rail until we can see the little screw on the inside. We're gonna use our 2.5 to remove it. We're gonna turn it again a little bit. There's another screw in there. We're gonna loosen that as well. And then we're gonna pull this guy out. So I'm just gonna skip to that part where I pull that guy out. All right, so I uh, got this out. And, you know, if you're having trouble, one, make sure, like I said, you got both uh, screws. Uh, this one came all the way out, uh, but make sure both screws are loose and this uh, red ring comes out, as you probably saw in the earlier part. Um, and if you just kind of grasp onto here and just kind of, you know, do a very light kind of pull and shift, not too much, but just, and it'll just wiggle itself out. So, now that that's out, we're going to start with the Y1 motor. So here we're going to do the same steps as before. We're going to mount the coupler to the motor. We're going to screw everything down. And then we're going to attach it to the Y rail. Or we're going to attempt to attach it to the Y rail. 
Um, as you can see here, I'm having some difficulties. Uh, this is the part where I discovered that the coupler can go on a right way and a wrong way. So I'll fix that and, you know, we'll get back to mounting. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to feed that in. We're going to tighten that in place. Then we're not going to tighten this down yet. We're first going to route our cable through by doing the same thing, taking apart the connector and shuffling it through. So this is the inside that would face the machine. So we're going to take two of the original screws and attach them back to the motor. And then we're going to grab the y-axis drag chain mount back. There are two specific screws in here and we're going to attach this to the other side of the machine. All right. So in your bag you should have this bracket, two screws, and four, I'm only holding two, but four nuts. So we're going to just go ahead and do the usual. Place those in. Now, they are longer, but that'll make sense in a minute. Do our usual tightening them down. So, you see, our bolts stick out a little bit, but everything is secure. So next, we take the mounting bracket. I had to focus. Oh. We're going to take the mounting bracket. It slides over the top. I think that's upside down. Over the top, and then we then secure that. the nuts on the outside. Okay, so now that these are secure, we're going to grab our Y-axis drag chain front mount bag and our Masso mounting bracket. and flip this over. Back at the front of the Y rail, we're going to start with the Maso mounting bracket. Now in the bag, there are four screws, two short and two long. Um, it's a very minor difference, but you just need to make sure that the two short screws go on the outside of the machine. The two long screws go on the inside of the machine. Next, reaching into our Y-axis drag chain, we're going to pull out this bracket. And this has threaded connections, so we're going to attach it here. And then using... I'm going to take that down. Taking these down. Mm 
Okay, so those are tight in place. Now we're moved back to the other side. Okay, so next we're going to install our Z1 X1 clip. So let's open it up like this. For now, we're going to leave it closed. And inside the baggie, there is a little bolt for Y axis drag chain. We're going to use that to connect it. Hi future me jumping in. Uh, so I just said use the screw that's in that bag. Uh, don't do that. Um, there's actually a silver bolt that's in the bag that you're supposed to use for that uh, Z1 X1 connector. Um, it doesn't really mess anything up at this phase, but just to save yourself a headache, uh, just leave the drag chain bolt in the bag until it's time to work on the drag chain and just use the silver bolt. So imagining that this bolt I'm attaching is silver, we're just going to continue and go ahead and mount our C1 and X1 hold bracket. Next, we're going to take our Y-axis homing trigger and mount it here on the outside using a 3 millimeter connection and then on the front we're going to take our y-axis homing switch making sure again that the cord is routed to the outside and we're just going to mount that right on top of there and secure it with a three millimeter wrench. Next we'll need to grab the Y raceway and the Y cable drag chain. We are going to loosen this back up. Take off the front piece. Make sure the back piece is secure. So we're going to start with our 2.5, we're going to remove these two screws, but don't let them go too far. Then we're going to get our Y cable drag chain. and. Lay that across the track. Okay, so you see on the bottom, you have two screw holes here that correspond to these here. So if you take a small screwdriver and look right along here, you can see we can pop open a couple of these three that will allow us to move these out of the way and then take the small screws that we had and secure that to the raceway cables back down and close those up. Next at the back of the Y rail we're going to remove these two screws from the bracket. So now that that is in place we will slide the front end into the slot. And then we will take the back and line it up with the holes back here and place a screw into place to make sure we are lined up. And then we'll with our three millimeter, we will tighten everything down. Uh, just be sure not to over tighten anything going into any of the plastic brackets. 
So now we're going to take the Y axis drag chain bolt and attach the drag chain here. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna slide the bolt in there and then making sure that it lines up with the edge of the rail to get a nice flush mount. Then back at the front of the machine, we're gonna take our Z1 and X1 clip and snap them into place. Um, I kind of fast forwarded through this because it took a little bit to get them firmly in place. Uh, you just want to make sure you're not uh, pinching or crimping any of the wires down when you do it. Once I felt I got the wires in their proper spaces and nothing was pinching, I used the silver screw to tighten everything down. All right, well, that took a little finesse, but we are now done with our Y rail and all the additions and ready to start setting up our X rail. To prepare for the X rail mounting, I put a screw in the front of the Y rail and I'm going to move the gantry block forward. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side where I'll put a screw in the front and move the gantry forward. Now we're going to actually mount our X-Rail backwards. So the back of the machine is facing because a lot of the work we're going to do is starts on the back and then we'll flip it around when it's needed. Starting on the right side, Remove the bolts holding the curly cable in place. Then we're going to move over to the motor side of the machine and remove all the bolts holding the motor into place. Before we remove the motor, we're going to carefully lay the X rail down on the other rails to easily access the screws holding the cables in place. Back on the right side of the machine, we're following the same process we've done before. We're going to remove that holding screw and release the clip so that we can slide the cable out on the opposite side and remove the motor. Next, we're going to carefully lift the X-Rail back up on the blocks and do inventory of our parts. Okay, inventory for this part. We have our X-axis drag chain mount for the front, homing switch, homing trigger, drag chain for the back, and our X motor. Repeating the same steps as before, you're going to loosen the two screws holding the coupler in place by turning the rail screw, and then we're going to slide out the remaining piece. Then we're going to grab our X2 motor, Assemble that, making sure to tighten down the coupler screws on the motor. And once that's in place, we'll repeat the process and make sure to okay. tighten down the two okay. screws on the internal coupler. Now, even though my angle is reversed, the side with this hole is the front of the machine. So we're going to take two of the original screws and put those back into place and tighten it down with the bolts from the original motor. Here I am tightening everything down. Uh, ignore the gray thing in my hand. It was a 3D printing experiment. Now moving to the opposite side of the motor, we're going to take the x-axis drag chain mount for the back and the two provided screws and set those into place. Those in there. Using the nuts provided and ignoring my uh, 3D printed 8mm socket, we're going to secure the bolts to the rail. And you'll notice that they stick a little proud, but that's okay. Next, we're going to take our X chain back bracket 
and put it over those bolts and secure it into place with our remaining two nuts. Now that our bracket is secure, we're going to feed the cable through the rails, remembering to take off the clip off the end. And on the other side, we're going to pull our cable through and reattach the clips. Now we're going to set our rail down again. We're going to align our screw hole with the clip and then we're going to screw it all back together. Now we'll we're going to tilt the rails back onto the gantry blocks and prepare to add our second clip. Using the x-axis drag chain front mount, you're going to take this bracket and the two silver bolts. Once the bracket is in place, we are going to tighten it down. Uh, just make sure to tighten it, but not over tighten it. Next, we're going to get our X raceway and remove the two screws from the end, like before, using our 2.5 millimeter. Going back to the motor side of our X rail, we're going to remove the two screws from the mounting clip. And now we're going to set our X rail into the provided slot. And then we're going to make sure to align and screw it to the clip in the back. Then we're going to grab our Z cable drag chain. We're going to set it on top of the rail. And because there's only one cable in here, you don't really have to unclip anything to secure it. So once again, using the two holes provided, we're just going to line those up and screw it down, making sure not to over tighten because we don't want to crack the drag chain. Next, going back into our X-axis bag, we're going to get our Z2 connector and the bolt. We're going to do something similar to what we did with the Z1 X1 connection. So just making sure nothing is being pinched, press it firmly together, and then we're going to screw it onto the rail. Once that's securely in place, we're going to go to the back and taking the provided screw, attach the drag chain to the back of the Z-axis. Now that all those components are installed, we get to flip our X-axis around and mount it the way it would during normal operations. Now on the left side of the X-rail, we're going to mount the X-axis homing switch, making sure that the cable is facing towards the back of the machine. Next, if you haven't done so already, we're going to remove this clip and the curly cable attached. In its place, we're going to attach the X-axis homing trigger 
taking the wires from the drag chain, we're going to mount it on the left side of the bracket, um, positioning it so that the white label is in the front of the bracket and not hidden or obscured by it. And then we're going to tighten that down. Next, we're going to square up the machine by putting uh, two bolts into each side. I went one in the front left and one in the rear right. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, one in the front left and one in the rear right. Then we're going to push the entire gantry to the back of the machine. At the back of the machine, I'm going to attach one screw on either side of the leg. This is to ensure that the machine doesn't get knocked back out of square. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side, just one screw in each leg. And then I'm going to push the entire gantry towards the front of the machine. Uh, once it gets back and I know everything is square, I'm then going to replace all the screws in the gantry and the feet. Now we're going to install the Z20. Now, as you can see, mine is already put together. Uh, when the order was put in, it was for the Z20, so it came pre-assembled. Um, if you are upgrading your beefy Z uh, and you, can, you, know, you have the motor set, then there's a video that I will tag below that will show you how to do the upgrade from your Z20 to the Z20 uh, Elite, I guess I'll call it. Next, we're gonna mount the Z slider to the gantry. Um, seeing as I have a spindle, I'm gonna mount this to the highest setting that I can. So just using some scrap material to give me a little leverage so I can get those first two screws in and then I will attach the rest. Uh, I'm using a M5 20 millimeter screw. If you're upgrading to the Z20, yours should come with one, but if not, M5 20 millimeter at your local hardware store. And with that, our X axis setup is complete and we are ready to start connecting cables to controllers. We have our power supply and cords. The Maso controller. On the front, we have our silver power button and our five white connection points. On the back, we have our main AC, our router, unless you're using a spindle, and a vac and vac AC, which we'll go into the later. Next, we have our Maso controller. Down here, we have the e-stop and the red and green cycle buttons that can be programmed later. Our Y, B, Z, X axis, and that last one. Then we have our tool setter, X, Y, Z probe, and laser. On the bottom, we have a connection for our spindle and USB port that we will you can connect the USB drive that came with the Maso controller. Now, moving to the front of the machine, we're gonna mount the Maso. So you're gonna need the bracket that says the Maso mounting arm. All right, so you have your arm and there is a screw at the bottom. We're just gonna unscrew that. And then once they're apart, you know, just slide that in there. So, you get rotating arm. And then you take the masso and just mount it on top. You're going to need the B1 wire bag and the wire set bag. Wire set bag. I took out all the cables, and you can see that they're labeled Y, A, Z, X. They're also labeled on the other end, Z1, Y1, 
and so forth. So it's really just a straightforward connecting of the cables. So on the Maso, we're just connecting the cables with their corresponding letter. On the power controller, um, you can pretty much mount the white ones anywhere. All those ports uh, produce the same amount of power. So uh, if you're doing cable management later and need to move them around, it works the same. Don't forget the B1 wire comes in its own bag, but still needs to get connected. Now that we're all wired up, we're going to move the Maso controller back onto the stand. And then we're going to temporarily move the power supply onto the opposite side just for filming purposes. Controller, we're going to connect our Z1 and X1 using the other end of cables. Moving down the drag chain, we're going to connect our X2 wire to our X2 connection point and our homing sensor. Then we're going to connect our Z2 cable. Back at the front of the machine under the controller, we're going to connect our Y1 cable and our homing sensor. On the right side of the machine, we're going to connect our B1 and the homing sensor cable. And then moving over to our Z slider to connect our Z cable and our homing sensor cable. On the main power box, I'm going to plug into the main AC input. I'm not going to worry about those other ports because I'm just trying to get it up and running. And now... Okay, so this is the controller interface. See our e-stop. So we're just going to release the e-stop. And it tells us to double tap to home. So I sped this up about 5x because the base configurations had it at like a 1% feed rate. Um, but if you pay attention to the Maso controller, you see I run into my first error. So, as we can see from up here, this plate is slightly touching the inner lip here when it's supposed to go clean in there. So, um, this one you can't really adjust too much because the two screws on there, it kind of fits right in. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the top screws just a tad because their only purpose is really to hold this plate here to hold the wires in. So I'm gonna loosen that, loosen that. And I see it already gave me a little wiggle room. So from there, and just, it lets those cables relax and it puts that in place. So I'm just gonna start with that front one, tighten it back down, tighten up the back, then just gonna manually slide this towards to test. Light goes off. So now I'm gonna push it back out and redo the homing sequence. All right, so turn off the E stop. Then All right, so ugh. now that we know, now we got that fixed, uh, let's speed it up a little bit. So we're gonna go to continuous mode, feed up to we'll say 
All right, and with that, we have now taken a standard journeyman and upgraded it to a Onefinity Elite journeyman. Um, so the big change here besides the motors is the Maso controller. Um, and the big deal about that is that this controller gives you access to features that are usually limited to, you know, 20 and $30,000 CNC machines. Uh, features such as uh, the option to add a rotary down the line or auto tool changing, which is the ability to have the programming pick up the correct bits it needs to complete a car versus you having to touch probe every single time. So you may have noticed that I have not put the spindle back on the Z yet. Um, I was waiting for a specific part to arrive so I could do all that and it just so happens that it arrived while I was filming this. So I'm going to do a second video where I show how to connect the uh, Huan Yang, the you know Amazon special uh, VFD system, uh, to the Maso controller. Um, I'll actually drop the cable that I purchased down below. Uh, it was already pre-made uh, pre by Pwn CNC, so didn't really feel like reinventing the wheel for something just for a quick connect. So that's it for me. Uh, thank you for your time. I hope this video was helpful as you are going through your upgrade process or helping you decide that maybe you don't want to do all that and you just want to buy an elite machine all put together. Either way, uh, like I said, I hope it was helpful. And if you enjoyed the content, uh, you know you know what to do at the bottom. And as always, I appreciate your time. Infinity, squad, and it's powered by Infinity. Surf grip is the way, yo. It's the way. Bennett's with shoes and occasionally done.